please welcome Artie Buss. Fred Settler, Saddle, Lytle. In the middle of the 20th century, particularly in the South, there was something called Jim Crow laws. In the legal system, there was a systematic discrimination that nearly rivaled apartheid in South Africa before the changes there in the 1990s. Today we have an African-American candidate for president, something inconceivable during that time. The main reason for this was the civil rights movement in the middle of the 20th century. And in the civil rights movement, there is one man who more than any other was responsible for that success. This was a man who relentlessly pursued Gandhi's philosophy of nonviolence. This was a man who promoted civil disobedience as a way of holding up a mirror to the moral fabric of the United States. This was a man who was the primary organizer behind the March on Washington in 1963 that ultimately resulted in legislation which forever transformed racial, racial relationships in the United States. And there's only one man that I could possibly be talking about. And that man is Bayard Rustin. <laughs> Who? <laughs> <laughs> Bayard Rustin. Bayard Rustin embodies the essence of servant leadership. Now, what is servant leadership? Servant leadership is when the leader conceives of himself or herself as a servant first and a leader second. It's not a decider or someone who's charging forth with everybody expected to follow, but someone who conceives of themselves as serving others. And the fact that nobody in here knew that I was talking about Baird Rustin is evidence of the fact that he embodied servant leadership, even though he probably would not have used that term. So who is Baird Rustin? In a short few minutes, I hope to give you some sense of this remarkable man and the sense of the kind of impact that he's had on our society today. He was born in 1912 in Pennsylvania and raised by his grandparents in a Quaker uh, atmosphere, which imbued him with ideas of nonviolence and pacifism as a way of resolving conflict from the very beginning. In the 1930s, he became passionate about racial inequality and the civil rights movement, having met some of the influential leaders, such as W.B. Du Bois, who was a frequent guest at his, house, at his grandparents' house. In 1941, with Philip Randolph, they conceived a march on Washington to protest racial inequality in the military and the federal government. This was effective to the point that it provoked President Roosevelt to declare an executive order forbidding racial discrimination in defense industries and in the federal government. And so they canceled the march, 1941. Bayard Rustin was a relentless organizer. He helped form the Congress of Racial Inequality much later, the Southern Christian Leadership Conference, and hosts of other organizations that were devoted to the equality of all, not just in the United States, but also in South Africa, in India, and many other countries throughout the globe. In 1946, following a visit to India, where under the influence of, of Gandhi, he conceived a freedom ride to challenge the laws in the South about, discri about discrimination in the buses. Now we all know about Rosa Parks, 
seven years before Rosa Parks, Bayard Rustin organized a group that would systematically get on a bus and deliberately sit in the wrong section. We all know about Rosa Parks. In Bayard's Rustin case, he was arrested and served 22 days on a chain gang for sitting in the wrong place on the bus, 1947. In 1948, he traveled to India again and studied with Gandhi's disciples and became imbued with the philosophy of nonviolence. In 1956, in Montgomery, Alabama, following the Rosa Parks incident, there was a young clergyman by the name of Martin Luther King who was reluctantly thrown into a leadership position for the bus boycott. He contacted Bayard Rustin, who came and became his closest advisor. To King, who was an educated man, had a PhD, nonviolence was very much an academic issue at that point. But for Bayard Rustin, who had a long experience of utilizing principles of nonviolence, he was able to make for King that nonviolence as a philosophy and an approach to promoting change, something that was tangible and concrete. And Rustin remained behind the scenes as King's closest advisor for many years to come. It was with King that Rustin and some others helped form the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And King wanted Rustin to be the head of it. But Rustin refused. Why did he refuse? Because he was gay. At a time when homosexuality was something that wasn't even discussed, he was actually open about it. In 1953, he was arrested in Pasadena, California, and served 60 days in jail simply for being gay. And because of that, when he organized the March on Washington, the civil rights leaders felt that it would hurt their cause if it was known that he did this. Now, this was not a secret. This was something that was very open. And in fact, on the eve of the March on Washington, Strom Thurmond, our dear friend, <laughs> loudly denounced Rustin as the organizer of this. And so, Baird Rustin was a man who created great change, both in organizing the, at the time, the largest protest in Washington or in the United States up to that point, and to this day, when you hear the word March on Washington, even though there have been many other marches on Washington since, there is only one that you could possibly be referring to. And he was the reason that that happened. And that march was the turning point in racial relations. And Bayard Rustin, because he was willing to be in the background and serve and be a servant leader, was able to promote, promote the kind of changes that our society really needs, and still needs. And so we need more leaders like Baird Rustin. And I hope to see them, Mr. Joe